Hey, welcome to this uh, first video of 2020. Happy New Year to all. In this video, I'll give you a little bit of an update of how my trees are doing in the winter and what I have been doing for this past month that I have not uh, published any videos and a little bit of an experiment in progress that I will share with you how is it going and I'm very excited about. Today it's uh, about minus 8 Celsius right now but the weather is a bit crazy here it's going to go up to plus 7 and there will be a freezing rain and then the day after it's supposed to go back to minus 15 yesterday it was minus 15 also so it's really big swings this winter has been very mild but with these very big swings which is really the worst for for trees uh, as you can see in the background behind me you see all the trees they're all encased in ice and with some snow Many of them have a little duller color, like the collected tuya. This is another tuya. Um, hem hemlocks and and uh, the larches are okay. I have all these trees that I don't plan to work obviously they are they have mulch in between and as you can see there is very little snow on the ground we can see here the ground level but inside this protective area the snow is much higher with mulch also so the trees are doing fine even though the snow has not covered all the foliage the root area is protected and they will be fine of course this uh, big swings in temperature are really the worst but but uh, these are all rustic uh, species uh, species from here, species very strong roots. In this area here I have two two occidentalis that were in my garden and were uh, removed from the garden are in 100% diatomaceous earth for the last three years. I still don't know if I will use them for bonsai or to practice grafting or simply put it back in the environment but just to show you that they are absolutely exposed to the elements for the last three winters already and um, with without any issues here in the cold greenhouse conditions are much more stable right now we have 2.4 celsius with 77.4 relative humidity um, i put here most of the species that most of the trees that i can or want to work with uh this ponderosa pine trees here don't need to be here but with a with the lack of control outside be it the freezing rain that I mentioned or animals I rather have them here trees that I want to work trees like this large that was um, wedge cut and a few others uh, all the maples and the Japanese white, uh, red and black pines. This, this Japanese red and black pines have to stay here, but 
Um, all the others don't really need to be here, but since I want to work them, or if I want to protect them from the elements, I'd rather have them here. If I had the space, I would have all my trees uh, in a cold frame in the winter. But having the advantage of being interested in working mostly on local species that will, can withstand much colder temperatures than, for example, Japanese red or black pines, um, I do have the choice. I have a video about winter care, and if you would like to watch it, the link is in the description below. As I mentioned in a previous video, the most dangerous issue with trees in winter is watering. If they are in, well, however you keep them. If they are frozen outside, it's not an issue. They will always have snow that will melt. But here inside, the problem is that the surface may seem humid, but the core dry. So when you water, you have to water thoroughly and sort of stick your finger a little bit to try to gauge it because the little bit of humidity that you may have in the air may, may feel the surface wet, but actually it's dry. At this temperature of 2.4 Celsius, which is um, perhaps, uh, I'm not sure, but just above 35 Fahrenheit, maybe 38, you, st you start having some metabolic activity in the roots, but not much. And so the trees may be using some water. Um, so you have to really be on point with watering in the winter. This is what I want to show you as the main part of this video. This is a Tui occidentalis that was a ground layer. I call it the chasm because it somehow reminds me of a Tui occidentalis that I saw in, in New York, which is a, a, a canyon there. I highly recommend you to visit. And the most exciting thing that I'm pursuing with this tree right now, I don't know if you have noticed or not, is this um, feature here, which is the dead wood connected to a copper tube, reconnected to the dead wood, and the same in here, dead wood, copper, dead wood. This is still a work in progress, but the idea is of having mixed media within the tree, embedded in the tree, sort of um, perhaps more natural, at the same more abstract than the work of uh, Nick Lenz and David Crust, which I recognize as, as pioneers. In here, the idea is that this copper tube will become greenish with patina as it gets watered. And, and together with the tree, the natural parts, it will look quite nice. It will look at the same time more abstract and more natural and will make out of this tree a little bit more of a piece of art and perhaps this combination of tree with other material this mixed media style with that could be glass or could be stone but not trying to disguise it and pretend to be entirely natural may be something that helps uh, bonsai to be more accepted as an art form, making the trees a little more artsy. Um, 
I imagine that this can be used, for example, if you have a large tree with a piece of dead wood that broke away. Instead of trying to glue it, uh, you can imagine that you captured in the moment, the moment where this dead wood split away and sort of like an explosion and it stopped in the air. And you could do that by attaching the dead wood to the rest of the tree with a glass rod or with um, metal rods and this would be quite a beautiful effect so there are many possibilities to mix to mix other materials with with the tree in a bonsai to make it um, very interesting today I will style this tree it will be the second styling and I will further refine the connection between the the copper and the dead wood and the dead wood still has to be refined, burned, stained with um, lime sulfur. Maybe I will put some white gouache when I show you the final result um, to to envision how the tree will look once it is aged and and really white with the with the lime sulfur treatment this is something that i've been thinking about for a long time that in bonsai we don't have to be restricted to to a natural tree um and and if we make art out of bonsai we're not restricted to use only wood. We can use metal, we can use glass, we can use other things. And this is just the first experiment that we'll see after dipping my toe in the water of this new direction, I will see where it takes me uh, in 2020 and beyond. So I hope you enjoyed this idea and, and uh, Let's see how the tree looks at the end of this styling.
the final result of the styling. I still need to paint with the gouache if I want to make it look as it how it will look once it becomes weathered and 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 protected with um, lime sulfur. This is a feminine design with small pads, but several of them. This being a tuya, um, it's an elongating species, and so it's okay to work on the foliage, but not on the roots too much. This was repotted um, last winter, and so the roots had time to recover, and there was a lot of growth, and now I'm, it's okay to remove about 40% of the foliage. Um, this will grow again soon, so as an elongating species I will have to keep shortening, uh, managing the growth. But whenever I cut, I always cut leaving um, growing tips. If you s can see the foliage in Tuya here, the underside is a different color than the side that is facing the sun. So whenever you style it, you have to be care be mindful of always placing the the foliage with the proper side face facing up. So we have here multiple pads, short ones, small ones, and the tree looks good from all directions, as good as I can make it. Uh, obviously not from this side, it doesn't look quite good here. As you can see the pot has a defect and I, may, and I wanted to show it, not to hide it. Well, it's on the back, but it's with white. And yeah, I feel that the tree looks good from all directions. And the mixed media part of it adds to the composition with, with the extra dead wood here and here. There would be a negative space here and I think it feels quite nice, but it doesn't detract from the tree being still the main element, but it will age beautifully with patina once it starts getting watered and rained on. This species, Tuya occidentalis, is really one of my favorites. It has foliage that can be worked like a juniper, it has the flexibility of a pine, it's aromatic, it's extremely hardy, it's very easy to find as nursery stock for that is sold for hedges, so you can always, and because it's sold for hedges, you can find it as old hedges in the, in the city as urban yamadori or urban dori or or city dory, whatever you want to call it. So that's it for now. And um, now, before I finish this video, I want to discuss what I did in the last month. I have been dis experimenting with cement as a medium to create containers for bonsai. And uh, I will show you now the results of this experiment so far. I'm still evolving the technique in terms of finding lighter aggregates that mixed with cement produces the mortar or the concrete, whatever, however you want to call it. And there are additives such as super plasticizer and, and fibers that make it strong and malleable and it can be worked almost like clay at a certain stage. Then it can be chiseled and then it hardens like rock and it's it's um, resistant to freeze-thaw, it is um, hell, uh, safe for the tree once it's sealed or, one is, or if it's not sealed or leached of the alkalis in, a, in, in the cement, but once it's sealed it's safe and it is a fantastic material that allows us to, to explore things that were never explored or very little explored in with bonsai containers. The fact that uh, 
a concrete or a cement container doesn't have to be fired allows it to be um allows us to use it in in together with other materials such as wood or or met or metals or glass to make pieces of art on which you can plant trees just to give you a, an idea of the level of art quality that can be produced with concrete i'm sharing below um a link to Catherine Stanek and her art. She's an American sculptor that uses concrete and it's just amazing the quality of what you can produce. So the idea is not to try to make containers that are better than than ceramic. There will always be a place where ceramic is just an additional material that can be used with different possibilities so you don't need to try to we don't need to try to copy and try to make pots that look like ceramic just because cement is cheaper than ceramic we really have to use it as and take a benefit of the qualities that that material has the fact that it doesn't have to be fired the fact that it can be poured or hardened and then shaped uh, the fact that it can be mixed with other materials. So I feel that we're just starting to, or at least I am just starting to explore what can be done with cement, which is new. Uh, one, one idea, for example, which is a bit crazy, is that you can create a, a container that envelops the tree. So imagine that this would be a half moon um, container instead of this but actually this is the the wall part of it and there is a hole through which the trunk grows this is something that can be done with cement because you can create half of the pot and then create the other half and 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 make it a as a single hole uh, a single unit uh, strong and 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 and, and uh, resistant to freeze thaw, with a hole that you build the pot around the tree. You plant the tree and then you bu finish building the pot around. Of course, this could not be done with ceramic, um, because you would have to kill the tree to to have it um, fired. But with cement, you don't have to. With a fast drying mortar that I use sometimes, in about an hour, part of it is done. You can seal it the next day. You can already plant a tree on it and then build the rest. So in a matter of two days, you can uh, create a container, two or three days at least, you can create a container Another possibility then is that if you have a tree that you will repot in the weekend, you can create your pot or your container during the week, build to measure, even 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 for a deciduous tree, for example, after you work the roots, because the tree can stay at least a day with proper humidity in the root mass without a pot and so it really offers a lot of possibilities that cannot be done with ceramics and it's another venue for one's creativity that um, that is slightly different than working on on the trees working on the trees is quite technical because you have to be wiring or the static the static part of it is one that is is essential but but it gets so mixed up with the technical parts that uh, it's not a totally free form act of creativity as is using concrete to build uh, to build um, containers so I hope you enjoyed these containers that I'm showing and 
and perhaps you decide to experiment yourself. If you want to know what I've learned so far with with concrete, I'm putting a link below to a to a post in the Mirai forum where I wrote more or less as much as I can think relevant to share. Uh, I'm not hiding anything. I have no interest in making money out of this. Maybe I will sell some of these containers. Maybe not. But but the more people doing this, the better for the art. So I hope you enjoyed this video and and the final result with the mixed media three. It's quite nice that these more or less have the same direction, pushing this way. Um, and I wish you a 2020 full of creativity and health and and with evolution of with great evolution in your trees, in your bonsai and in your technique and in your bonsai philosophy. So let's all share our passion for the trees, for the art and and move forward. Thank you very much. I hope to see you soon and if you like this video please share and subscribe. And until the next one, bye-bye.